Good afternoon and welcome to Design Master Training. My name is David Robison. Today we are going to be looking at transformer options in Revit. If you are attending the training live, you can ask questions in the chat box. If you are watching the recording of the training, you can call or email your questions. Our phone number is 866-516-9497 and our email address is support at designmaster.biz. So let's get started looking at our transformers in Revit. Got a project uh, pulled up here with uh, some devices. I'm going to select this transformer. And in DM Electrical, if you press Panel Edit, it will pull up uh, the settings for that transformer. The name there, just to be clear, uh, it is Panel Edit. We use Panel kind of as a catch-all for distribution equipment, uh, basically things that aren't light fixtures, receptacles, or like mechanical equipment. So transformers, switchboards, transfer switches, all of that kind of falls under the panel edit command. So you use panel edit to look at your transformers. So we have this transformer selected here. And there are a couple of uh, variable uh, settings that are specific to transformers that you can set. Uh, the first in the definition, we have the transformer KVA. Uh, Revit doesn't have a built-in KVA value for their transformers, so you have to specify it in our software uh, because it comes into play in quite a few different calculations. So we do need to know the KVA value. Uh, you can set it uh, from our pull-down list here. We've got uh, built in the more common uh, transformer sizes, and then we have the custom selection uh, if you've got the transformer that doesn't match that. Uh, so if you've got something else, is select custom and you can type in whatever you want. So if you've got a little tiny transformer, you can put that in or you can choose from our list. We then have the transformer K factor rating. You can set it to none or a specific rating there. This is a purely uh, informational. We don't use this in our calculations anyway, anywhere, but uh, it will show up in the shared parameters. So if I set this to, for example, K13, if I uh, exit, it's going to save all that. And if I look at the shared parameters for this transformer over in properties, in the design master section, if we scroll down to where the transformers are. Uh, so the K factor rating is specified there. Again, just a, a text field uh, with that information. And then the KVA is being displayed there. Uh, and then it's also being used in our uh, calculations. There are two other settings that we have for transformers. These are down in the fault calculation. We have the transformer impedance percentage and the transformer XR ratio. Uh, so these values are used in the fault calculations and also uh, the impedance percentage is used in the voltage drop calculation uh, for the impedance through that transformer. We uh, have built in some impedance values based upon the size of the transformer. So if you change the size, you get a different impedance value. And then you can also override that if you have different values from your manufacturer. And then we have uh, for the XR ratio, uh, we default to an XR ratio of five. For most transformers, uh, that's gonna be what they are. If you know that you have something different, you can change that and then that will uh, adjust the fault calculations. If I go to the help command, uh, we can see what those default transformer uh, settings are for the um, impedance values. The impedance values, the defaults that we have uh, are based on the transformer uh, size and these are the defaults that we have. And so if you want to override that, you have to manually do that. All of those values can be set at the instance level. So if you haven't set up your families ahead of time uh, to work with our software, you can just take any project and apply those values to them uh, and that'll work just fine. Uh, so you don't have to do any setup ahead of time. You can, however, uh, spend a little time in your families so that your projects come in with those values already set. So if I select this transformer and run the Revit edit family command and open up the family, we can then in uh, Design Master run the family edit command. And we can set those same values in the family itself. So we can change the device type from uh, the default of uh, just a generic branch circuit device to a transformer. And now we have specific values we can set for the transformer 
that will fill in uh, those values when it's used in the project. You can set some uh, prefixes and suffixes for the description of the transformer. That's uh, so you can have that. So if you wanted to say that this is a transformer and then have the transformer name, you could do that. Uh, you can specify the neutral and the ground uh, sizes if you want to have them be uh, set to something other than the default automatic sizing. You can also specify whether it requires an IG conductor. Uh, and then the transformer specific values, uh, again, you can set the KBA, the K factor rating, the impedance percentage, and the XR ratio. Uh, and if you set them in the family, then when they're used in the project, uh, those values will come in set. We have an option for the family setting, which will cover the whole family, or you can set uh, the values for specific types within the family. And so typically, this is where you would actually do the work and say, okay, I'm gonna override these values. And this one is my three KVA version. And then, okay, this one is a six KVA, which isn't there. So you would do custom, do six and so on and so forth. Uh, so, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time. You have to, work to slowly fill in all these values. And then once all of those are set, when it's used, it'll automatically fill in. So you choose the type, uh, which is gonna control other things in your family as well, and then it's also controlling the design master values. If we load that into our project, if we select the transformer, I'll set it to the 30 KVA type there. And then if we run the panel edit command, you'll see that the KVA and the K-factor rating uh, are filled in. And actually at this point, they can no longer be set. So uh, it's pulling those values from the family. It assumes these are kind of more intrinsic values of a transformer. If you have a 30 KVA transformer, you can't just swap it out to a 15 without like really changing it uh, to a 15 KVA transformer. So the assumption is if you set it in the family level, that if you want to change that KVA, you need to actually change the type to change that. So we do fix them. You can't override the values at that point. So the transformer KVA is set. The K factor rating is set. The description, the upstream panel, uh, you can see that we added that transformer. This can be overridden. So you, we have the default, but we can give do a custom uh, description still. Wire sizing is the same way. The, the neutral and ground, we have the defaults from the family but we can set them to something different if you want to, because again, that's not intrinsic to a transformer. You can run a different size wire to it uh, without changing the, the transformer itself. And then the transformer impedance and XR ratio, uh, again, those are fixed at this point because it's now intrinsic to that transformer. Those are the settings that we have for transformers in our software. Uh, so it's just a couple of, uh, specific things that uh, differentiate a transformer from a panel or another piece of equipment. Uh, if you have any questions related to transformers or anything else related to our Revit software, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, so the question is, can you show all the generated, all the transformers in the project in the schedule? And the answer to that is maybe because that's uh, as much as anything a Revit thing as a design master thing, but we can look through it here. Because uh, uh, the scheduling, um, we, as much as possible, try to take advantage of what Revit already has. So you just do a standard schedule in Revit and all of our stuff works nicely with that. So I'm going to create a new schedule and transformers happen to be, I'm gonna filter this to show just electrical stuff so we have slightly fewer things and we're going to go to electrical equipment and we'll call this a transformer schedule and now it wants to know the fields and so here you just fill in the fields that you want to display i believe there's a name uh, okay so we have the panel name i'll put that on just so we have the name of the device uh, and then we could put in other revit values and all of the design master ones are these dme values the t is for text values N is for numeric, depending on what you want to do with these shared parameters. So for a transformer, uh, I'll just put in the KVA value uh, and say the K factor rating, just so that we have something being displayed. Uh, click OK. And so now we have a schedule, uh, and this is of all the electrical equipment in your project, which is probably more than you were intending to see at this point. Uh, so now you need to do a little bit of filtering to get that to show what you want. 
we can go to filtering. So we were looking at the fields. We can also filter. Uh, you can filter basically on the fields that you've specified. So for example, we could say, okay, let's take the transform uh, KVA. If the parameter exists, we will include it in our list here. That probably will get all the transformers. That didn't actually do what I wanted. All right, we'll do if it, uh, uh, if it has a value. Try that. Uh, so we do get more. We actually get everything back in because uh, some of these values are now empty values. It was previously they were nothing. Revit is a little weird between nothing and empty. Uh, so let's change this from has a value to uh, does not equal an empty text field. There we go. Okay. So uh, it's just a matter of playing with the Revit settings to get the schedule that you want. Uh, and Design Master is just a, you know, we have standard shared parameters. So you schedule them exactly like you would anything else in Revit. And it's a matter of then building the schedule that you want to see. Uh, there's a question, does Design Master for Revit have the panel and equipment overload warnings? I assume you're referring to the warnings that we just added to our AutoCAD software where we, where we warn if the uh, panel is overloaded. Our soft, we do not do any checking of that in Design Master. Revit has some stuff built in, but I don't know how sophisticated that is. So. Uh, it would be just anything that Revit has for overload warnings. We do not have any of that built in yet. Something for the future. There's an additional comment from another uh, person that uh, he says that the best way he's found to check for overloads is to do a schedule with some formatted values, uh, which probably is a good way to do it. You can, uh, again, with the scheduling, uh, all of this information, you can do some formatting. You could have a column that... Uh, is the, the value and, and then compare it to something else and if it overloads, have it highlighted. Uh, there's probably ways, yeah, there would be ways to do that. And that's probably your best way uh, with Revit to take advantage of the scheduling because Revit does have really good scheduling to take advantage of that to do some of the quality control checks. Thank you for watching today's Design Master training. Contact us with questions or comments by calling 866-516-9497 or emailing support at designmaster.biz.